Uh, so Adam, what would be your ideal car and what colour would you like it to be? Uh, my favourite car in the world is the Audi R8 and I think oh, I'd have it a, nice a like neon orange. Okay, well I'd want that car from Fast and Furious 2, that's bright pink. I think it's safe to say that the SAS has a reputation of being filled to the brim with hardened badasses. Something that stands in contrast with the fact that during the Gulf War, they used to drive cars that were bright pink. So what was their vehicle of choice then during the Gulf War? Well, for the SAS and indeed a lot of British armed forces, it was the old style Land Rover, which is apparently a great vehicle for a variety of military engagements and situations because you could customise it to do whatever the fuck you wanted it to. Not to mention yeah. it was hardy, reliable, and fairly easy to repair. And I'm now just imagining uh, the SAS before a mission, like Joe, like Need for Speed. You get like the car customization screen, and just there, there, going, okay, so we definitely need a fat fucking spoiler on it. Get 20 inch <laughs> rims, get some spinners on there. Put the du what? Put your fucking racing stripe down the middle. <laughs> you just got the SAS just rocking up. It, or it looks like a, a a Hot Wheels toy. I'm assuming they were given these Land Rovers. Yeah, so they were given 72 of them, and they were all painted bright green, and the SAS were told, use these vehicles to just do what you do best, which is stuff that no one is ever allowed to find out about. <laughs> yeah, um, SAS missions tend to be top secret, but we do know that they were given 72 bright green Land Rovers, which the SAS didn't like, because something that's green in the middle of a desert might as well just have the word shoot here written on it, because they stick out like a sore thumb. So what happened next? Well, the SAS stripped that paint off and painted each of the vehicles a shade of shocking pink. And far from being a stylistic choice, um, pink is noted as being one of the best colours for camouflage in the desert. And that might sound strange, but it really does work and you have to trust us on this one. And the story goes that um, this decision was reached when the SAS happened upon a downed plane in the desert from World War II that they had not spotted from a distance. And what they noticed is that um, the paint on the plane had worn away and given it a pinkish metallic sheen Yeah. that simultaneously reflected just enough of the sun while also absorbing enough of the colour from the sand to make it effectively invisible from a distance. And that made them realise, wow, pink's a really great colour for blending into this specific environment. Uh, even though it sounds counterintuitive. Because if you think pink <laughs> is pink and a desert is yellow, and there's a lot of seemingly contradictory things like that in camouflage theory. Um, one of my favourite examples being the tiger. When you look at a tiger, what colour is a tiger, Adam? It's black and orange. Yeah, it's bright orange and jet black. And they look and they stand out, right? They, they look so obvious. Yeah. And they hide in green undergrowth. And you might think, that sounds fucking ridiculous. How would you not spot a bright orange tiger against a green background? Well, yes, they do stand out when they're just stood in the open. When they enter the undergrowth, that camouflage is flawless and can result in the tiger seemingly becoming invisible. And my favourite example of this in regards to human camouflage, like used by the military and stuff like that, is um, the camouflage they will use at night. What would you think the colour they'd use at night would be? It would just be like head to toe in black. The problem with that, though, is that you very seldom encounter pitch black night. And there is, for the most part, always some source of light, whether it's the moon, the stars, like, you know, stuff in the distance. And as a result, something that's pitch black stands out against the almost pitch black night. It works, but most people would wear a different colour. If you want to really, if you want to blend into the night, um, black's a terrible colour for that, because it stands out too much. And to bring it back to the bright pink Land Rovers that the SES would drive around during the Gulf War, in addition to that story of a plane from World War II, like having its paint sheared off um, due to the weather and time. They also recall stories about an experimental camouflage for battleships called Mountain Baton Pink, which operated in a similar manner where it looks like it stands out up close, but from very far away, which is generally where the enemy's going to be spotting you from, it, you kind of blend in. <laughs> and that reminds me a little bit. Have you ever heard of Razzle Dazzle? Or I think it's Razzle Dazzle Camouflage. Uh, type in um, Razzle Dazzle Camouflage, World War II. It's a very, very funky zebra stripes. Yes. And uh, the idea behind that is, yes, it stands out, but uh, it hides the angles of the ship and hides its true size and even what direction that it's going in. 
Because if you look at it, it just looks like a mass of just various shapes that don't really make any logical sense. And yeah, because as I'm looking at the picture, I'm like struggling to like process what's on it. Yeah, and that's the idea. Like you can't really tell what shape the ship is or what armaments it has. And that was the thinking of well, battleships are almost impossible to fucking hide anyway. They're so massive. Why not paint them like this? Because at the very least, then the enemy doesn't know what armaments you have and. In warfare, or indeed all combat, the element of surprise is usually a really good thing to have. And I don't think anything surprised an enemy more than encountering just this fleet of ships that just look like weird moving polygons. <laughs> like they look like don't make sense. And looking at that picture now, Adam, don't you kind of want that on a car? Oh yeah, like... Can you imagine? That, you know when I said I wanted like a bright orange Audi R8? Yeah. I now want a Razzle Dazzle R8. <laughs> just, can you, can you imagine if you get caught by a speed camera? Them trying to process what the fuck is going on in the image. <laughs> They're going to think that the camera's haunted and it's like something like The Ring. Do you when you look at photos of people after they watch the haunted tape and their face is all blurred up? They're going to look and go, <laughs> what is this weird car from another dimension? Like, is, is Interstellar happening in my office right now? Now that I've got that new car, that Audi I bought, I really just want to just go out and just <laughs> get a razzle dazzle. No, what you need to do with it is get one of those big decals of an anime girl on the side. Because I think it's fucking amazing when you see like a 500 grand Lamborghini and someone just puts a big dumb anime thing on it. And it reminds me of, I think, one of my favourite GIFs from a racing game. I think it's the guy Sunil Legend on Twitter. He makes just really cool GIFs of video games. And there's one of him drifting around a corner on like Brands Hatch in a Gran Turismo game or something. But he's customised his car to just have a big fucking dumb anime vinyl on it. <laughs> <laughs> he's just, uh, just slamming it sideways around a car. It's like, yeah, that's awesome. And I want to see the SAS do that. Have you played Modern Warfare at all? Uh, in the past, yeah. Okay, well, the newest Modern Warfare, you can get, like, skins for your guns. Yeah. And one of the skins you can get is just an anime skin. And it just puts a big dumb anime girl on the side of your gun and makes it bright pink. Uh, it's just like the weeb cannon, and I want to see that on everything now. I want to see like, just warfare just turns into this like just horrible nihilistic nightmare, where just everything is now sponsored and just like everything is memes. Just turn regular combat into Fortnite, and maybe we'll realise that war is pointless. But before we finish this video, I need to just say one thing, and that is the name that was given to the special pink Land Rovers. And Adam, would you like to guess what they called them? Oh, it's gonna be like Betty or something. <laughs> Um, they call, they called them Adam the Pink Panthers. Oh, for God's sake! <laughs> so they were driving around in little cars called Pink Panthers, and that's kind of cool. So Adam, you mentioned at the start you were like a bright orange car. Yes, is there any reason you want to have a bright orange car? Well, that's my favourite colour, and it's my favourite car. So putting them together, but then as I said that, I thought, didn't Tony Stark have that in like uh, all the Marvel films? <laughs> I could get a car in any colour. I'd want that Vanta black. Have you ever seen that? Type it on your computer now, but I'll describe it for people at home. It is a special kind of paint that absorbs 99.99% of all light, meaning that you cannot make out the shape or the definition of any object, and it just looks like a hole in time. Yeah, I see what you mean. You cannot see any yeah, details. It looks like you've not unlocked your car yet. I want to see that, because can you imagine if they got a picture of that? And a, and a speed camera. Oh, yeah. And it look, it look because if, if you're looking at pictures of Vanta Black stuff now, it looks like you just badly photoshopped it out and didn't fill in the area. Imagine seeing cars driving around where it just looks like a mistake and it's coming towards you like, what is this? I, I don't know what to do. So I want that. I want cars, but I think it'd be really dangerous. Same with stuff like um, Razzle Dazzle Camouflage, where it, it's just, you can't have it. It's too dangerous. It messes with your eyes. I was staring at it. I couldn't pick out like guns or anything. Yeah, it's really counterintuitive. You think it makes the it makes it stand out more, but standing out more doesn't really help if you can't tell what the thing is you're looking at. Yeah. <laughs> and I love that idea. And there's loads of experimental stuff right from World War II where they toyed around with ideas like that, and they just never really went anywhere. There's like um, the Pycrete submarine or battleship. Have you ever heard about that? It is a material made by getting um, sawdust or wood shavings. Um, you soak it in water, and then you freeze it. Uh, and that sounds like a fairly simple material, correct? Oh, yeah, I was waiting for the rest of the recipe. <laughs> no, it's, it's that. Uh, it is bulletproof, uh, bombproof. Um, you can set it on fire, and it doesn't melt or burn. Um, it floats. It's cheap, because it's just fucking wood pulp and water. 
And there were plans during World War II to make a battleship out of it because it's almost indestructible as far as standard munitions are considered and it's just made out of wood. And the story goes that um, they sold Winston Churchill on the benefits of the material by throwing a block of it in his bath. <laughs> and it just floated. And apparently Winston Churchill played with it for about an hour and it still stayed there. And there was another one where they wanted to make a triangle-shaped battleship. Oh, no, sorry, a circular battleship. So you couldn't tell which direction it was going in, but they couldn't figure out a way to stir it, which I thought was really funny. 